I, uh, I do love the outdoors. I have a lot of fond memories of growing up in Minnesota. Um, I think the best memory I have is in elementary school, we skated and played hockey every day after school. And the cool thing about it was at our school, or actually the, all the elementary schools, the city would come by and flood the uh, baseball and football fields. And so they'd do this every morning. We'd all be getting off, for, um, off the bus, and you'd see the big trucks coming in. The first, you would have like a sidewalk sweeper, a big rotary brush. It would brush off all the, the snow from the night before or you know ice shavings that accumulate. And then you'd see a big tank truck just spread out a sheet of new or sheet of water that would turn into ice. And being a skater or being a hockey player, you just really anticipate skating on a nice clean sheet of ice. So we'd all get excited. Um, they also put up, so if you think about how big a city block is, the school sits on half of it and the, the rest of it was, a, was, was the fields that turned into ice. So it was huge. Um, the city would put up the boards as well. And we just anticipate going out and skating after school every day. Um, as far as the amount of time we spent skating, every day was from, say, 3 to 6. I would wait for my dad to come pick me up, and all the other kids would go home for dinner. If we call it dinner now, I think in Minnesota, rural Minnesota, we called it supper. Is anybody <laughs> familiar with still saying supper? But anyways, the cool thing about it is, that, you know, I grew up in this old school. It still had a bomb shelter, okay, so it was built right around the World War II. In order to access the warming house where we got ready, rested, warmed up, you had to go down a flight of stairs, and they were all covered in wood so you wouldn't ding up your skates. And as a 10-year-old, you know, think about opening a huge steel door to get in there. So I always remember the struggle to get in, and you'd walk in, and it would be um, like walking in a, into a weight room, just a rubber, rubber floor. It was really dimly lit. There was a telephone to call home. You had a bathroom, a Coke machine, and a bunch of wooden benches. It wasn't, it wasn't fancy. We all loved it. We, we spent our, a lot of hours there. So, so today, I'm going to tell you about my love of the outdoors. Growing up in Minnesota, um, it's hard not to. I, I lived in, in western Minnesota, which is, uh, you know, it's land of 10,000 lakes, but there we were in a heavily populated lake area. I lived on a lake. Everybody I knew, I feel like, lived on a lake or had a cabin on a lake. So all we did in the summer was all day long. We were either water skiing, fishing, uh, boating, canoeing. My dad had a sailboard. So he, he was, I feel like he was one of the pioneers of it. He did it in like 1985 when he was in Hawaii. Um, so in the summer, it was awesome. We stayed out all day long and just would get sunburned and tired to come in. And um, I think everybody can appreciate the Minnesota summers, but what I hear from a lot of people that aren't from there is, how do you really deal with the winters? And so it's, it's really simple. You just have to embrace it. So the same lake that we, lit, that we skated on or that we swam on, we skated, we ice fished, just like grumpy old men, you guys have seen that. It's just like that. Um, <laughs> it is. It is. Um, snowshoeing, cross country skiing, skating, and playing hockey on it. So it was really great. Um, just have a lot of fond memories. So you guys are probably wondering how I end up in Kansas City after I have stupefied you with the great <laughs> I, uh, experience of Minnesota. But life happens. You know, I was, uh, my son was on the way. I was working for Cargill at the time. They loved to move you, kind of to prove your, uh, uh, prove your worth to the company. And uh, they moved me from Minnesota, being a Minnesotan born and raised, to Arizona. And not like Phoenix or any, any cool place. Kingman, Arizona, the middle of nowhere, 75 miles from Las Vegas, there was a steel mill there. And I worked so they said if you do a good job you stay one or two years well I was out of there in one year and they and they moved me to Kansas City 
because it's the heart of America. I could drive four or five hours from here and get to most of my territory. So that's how I ended up in Kansas City. I'm really blessed to have met my wife here. We got married four years ago. Her name's Barbara, and uh, she loves the outdoors just as much as I do. And so together we've got a blended family. My son is 16, Jeremy Jr. Emily, my stepdaughter, is 18, going to Kansas State actually next week. And my stepson is 25, who was married last year. So we're, uh, we're almost empty nesters, but we still, we take vacations together every year to Breckenridge as a family. And recently we went to uh, Northeast Oklahoma and did a canoe trip down the uh, Illinois River. So as you can see, I love the outdoors. And so keep in mind when, you know, maybe when you're seeing the Olympics in the next winter, or just if you're seeing a blues game, know that most of those guys probably grew up on a lake or an outdoor rink.